Hello, and welcome back to Tea with Tracy. Come and see you live every Tuesday at 12, spilling relevant tips, trends, and talking all things real estate and home ownership related. Today, we're gonna be talking about foreclosures and short sales. What's the difference between them? And also, what is an REO property? Today to talk to us about those topics are is title expert from First American Title, Matt Hudson. So without further ado, let's get Matt on to join us. Hey, Matt. Thanks for joining us. I see you got the First American Eagle behind. I'm actually sporting my Doby dog today. So all right. <laughs> we are all dog. logoed out. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So, great, great. Yeah. So, so thanks for joining me. And today we're going to talk. I know you welcome back. I should say you've been on, on the program with us before. You are always a wealth of information. Um, anything title, you are always my go-to person. Um, so I, so today we're going to talk about foreclosures and short sales. What's the difference between them? And then what the heck is an REO or REO property? I know uh, a lot of times, you know, we hear some of these terms and, um, don't always know exactly what they are and what they mean. So hopefully we can, uh, we can enlighten a few people today. (laughs) Yes. Well, uh, generally speaking, if the unfortunate event happens with a homeowner, um, gets behind on their mortgage, uh, there are a couple of things that can happen. Um, ideally, um, we want to avoid foreclosure at all costs, you know, keep paying those bills, keep people in their houses. We want people to stay in their houses. Yes. So um, if somebody gets behind in their bills and they are trying to sell their property and they don't think that they can get quite enough money for it to pay off their mortgage, then they may try to negotiate a short sale with their mortgage holder. And that is a lengthy process involving uh, the mortgage company and their, um, and their minions and (laughs) trying to uh, calculate out what their, what the mortgage company can get uh, from the sale to avoid a foreclosure. Right. So that's, that's generally a, a short sale is to avoid the foreclosure by the lender um, um, settling the debt for less than amount owed. In most cases, that's what people will see on their credit report after a short sale is completed. It may say, sell for debt less than amount owed. So that's a general uh, short sale explanation. Yes, and they're not very common. It's not something that um, if you're just like, oh, hey, I can't get what I want for my house, you know, uh, let me go the short sale route. No, it's it's actually quite a lengthy and and uh, not always the the simplest uh, you know procedure to go through, and it doesn't always go through. Um, you don't always get you know that approval for the short sale. So I just want people to keep that in mind. It's not like a an easy out. Um, yeah. It's in it it's it's truly a last resort. Yes, so. and it very it, it can be very difficult because it, it relies yes. on what what we in the business call third party approval. So you have to get the um, the mortgage company's approval to, to do this. They send letters. They're, um, they need to s- see settlement statements, and, and it can be, it can take quite a long time. And and it's and sometimes it doesn't result in the best of uh, endings. Well, so, so it, exactly. Good. Like I actually, when I was in the market to purchase a home before I purchased my home uh, over ten years ago, I actually there was a, a short sale home that I was interested in purchasing. And, um, you know, the sellers accepted my offer, but it had to go through the approval of their lender. And I waited for a year for that house wow. and the short sale did not go through. And, yeah. uh, and they ended up having to foreclose on the property. So um, that kind of leads us into, well, what's the difference? What is a foreclosure? <laughs> well, a foreclosure now, um, on, on average, if, if somebody uh, can't make their payments and they don't make their payments, usually... Uh, typically about after the third or fourth payment is missed, the mortgage company is going to uh, have a sh- what we call a sheriff sale. And that is kind of like an auction where the mortgage company is going to go out there and say, does anybody want to buy this mortgage? And, um, <laughs> and, uh, and then, um, you know, they, they, in most cases, you know, it stays with the mortgage company and then they file a sheriff's deed. And once the sheriff's deed is filed with the Register of Deeds office um, by the county sheriff or its deputies, then we go into what we call a redemption period. So if the property is unoccupied, um, vacant, 
then the redemption period is only in Michigan for 30 days. So after 30 days, they can take, they being the bank, can take possession of the property. And if it's occupied, uh, then there's a six month redemption period. So that gives the homeowner six months to refinance and pay that existing default mortgage off or sell it and then settle the debt and then um, and then the, the mortgage company who is foreclosing will file a redemption certificate and, and say they're not you know not continuing with the foreclosure and then it goes right back to the seller. Right. So and, that's and, and really six months it's plenty of time. If 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 you ever find yourself in the position where, you know, you can't make the payments any longer, short sale is not an option, and you you do get that notice of the sheriff's sale. Um, there is time to get your home sold, pay off that mortgage, and not have it affect your credit because both short sales and foreclosures have quite a lengthy stay on your credit report, which can affect your future, not only home buying, but if you buy or lease vehicles, um, basically anything that your credit report gets pulled up for. So if you can avoid it, um, it's best to. I, I know I've helped clients before that have received those notices and Six months is plenty of time, even if there's a few things you need to do to the home to get it ready to put on the market, but to get it done, closed, and get that that bank or that lender paid off so that you can avoid, um, you know, that long-term hit on your credit report. Right, right, yeah. So. Yeah, and then um, <clears throat> if the uh, prop, if the sellers or, or the homeowners can't, can't get that loan paid off or can't get that property sold in that six-month period, um, then the bank can take possession of the property. And if people are still in there, then they can file an eviction and, and get everybody moved out. And that's where everybody's stuff ends up on the sidewalk, unfortunately. Yeah. But at that point, is that's when it becomes what we call an REO. And in the business, an REO is a general statement that means real estate owned. And mm -hmm. It doesn't tell us who it's owned by. Right, but right. In, in my business, I know it's real estate owned by the bank or by the government. You know, right. It can be by the by the um, Department of, of HUD or, or the bank, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, et cetera, et cetera. And at that point, you've got a distressed property, bank owned, mm -hmm. and that's when, uh, you know, like I myself have bought a couple of foreclosed properties that I've lived in and, and yes. didn't, didn't get uh, – <laughs> didn't get to meet my sellers in those instances. Don't get to meet the sellers. You don't get no. to negotiate anything. It's like, here it is. Take it. Take yeah. it as is. I mean, sometimes the banks will go and do a little bit to these properties to make them appear more appealing. But um, I mean, my experience has been the, the foreclosed properties, even if they do some things, they're not going in and doing... Um, you know, the, the bigger ticket items. They might throw on right. a fresh coat of paint and, you know, maybe put in some inexpensive flooring to make it look good. But but typically those those homes need a lot more love, you know, um, yeah. and some time and money put into them. So, um, yeah, that's something to keep in mind. So those are when we, you know, when, when, when people ask me like for foreclosures, I, I, I mean, once they, they're back with the bank, I mean, and they're put on the market by the bank, um, you know, they're really no, in one sense, they're no different than any other listed property because they show up just as any other listed property. However, if you take a home that has a seller who's been living in that home, even if they haven't taken the best care of it, but they're still living in it, using the home, typically those homes are in better condition than these homes that end up sitting for a while as it goes through this process. Um, and, and most of the time the banks go and list the homes at market value. So it, there's no true deal, if you will, right. in buying a foreclosed yeah. property, yeah. um, at least in this market. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, and you know what, you, you brought up another good point. So when that, that sheriff sale, the notice of sheriff sale is sent to a homeowner, um, that's made public, right? So. I know I have a lot of times people will contact me like, oh, there's this pre-foreclosure home I saw on Zillow. Well, okay, it just means that they got noticed. The majority of the time, those homeowners, you know, they make it right. Um, you know, I know I had a, a friend contact me on a property that she and her husband were interested in, and it was actually just a, a miscommunication and like a, a mistake on the side of the lender with the paperwork that that was even put out there. This person had never missed a payment, never had any defaults, and it was just a paperwork mistake. So just keep that in mind. Um, you know, there's 
you know, being on the hunt for something that might come up in foreclosure, um, they may not come to fruition. And um, I know personally, I don't want to bet on other people's misfortune. So <laughs> right. if you're, we, we can definitely find great, um, great purchases and great homes that are available to you um, if you're searching. So that's right. That's so. right. But anything yeah. else from a title perspective that we should understand about foreclosures um, versus short sales with as far as the way title is transferred? Well, there's really no difference. I, I mean, the, the, in, it, when it comes to real estate in Michigan and most of the country, title, title is, uh, you know, it's not like a vehicle or personal property where you get a little a piece of paper, a ticket that's a certificate of title. It's who's in title. Right. And whose in title is defined by a conveyance of deeds. So whatever is filed with the Register of Deeds office, that is how title is transferred from one party to another. And you can do that. Now, the banks take it with a sheriff's deed signed by the sheriff or a deputy when the, they start the foreclosure process. But for, um, you know, normal consumers, there's your warranty deed, fiduciary deed, quick claim deed. Um, special warranty deed. I don't know if I'm repeating myself, but you know, it's just <laughs> yeah. they, the, the the end result is the same. They're transferring title to or their interest to a, a different party. So, um, so really, really no difference. I yeah. felt comfortable buying um, my own personal home was a bank-owned mm -hmm. property. I bought it during the recession, yep. and um, I have a deed, title insurance. It's it's generally the same process involved as a regular buyer-seller transaction. Okay, so there you have it. Transfer of title, title and ownership is just that. The way that it comes to to being is not. It's just it's just noting it just for this is how it came. But it bears um, has no bearing on you know your stake or ownership in the property that you are purchasing. So, um, right. yep. So if you do happen to purchase a short sale or foreclosure, um, a property that you know has become an REO uh, property, uh, you will be entitled to full ownership just as if you were to purchase it from another private citizen so correct yep well thank you so much for joining us again today matt always great to have you here on tea with tracy um and uh yeah i'm i'm looking forward to having you on again i'm sure we'll have you on again we'll talk uh talk some more title in the near yeah, future so <laughs> sounds great tracy all Love right being on. thank you uh, thanks so much thanks for joining us matt thank you all for tuning in whether live or on the replay and we will see you next tuesday at 12 on tea with tracy thanks so much bye-bye